Uh, questions for Coach. Fred, what does um, what does twenty one mean to you, and the direction that this program has gone in these three years? Well, I, I think I think it's a step. Uh, you know, and I, I I think the important thing is that we realize it's just a step. It's uh, you know, I'm happy for for Eric to be the captain of the twenty win team, and I'm happy for our team to have accomplished this. But we're not done, and. Uh, you know, you never want to be satisfied. Coach, you take all your frontline players. I think there were 20 and 25 from the field today. That's a pretty remarkable statistic. You, look at this you know, and the other thing is, I mean, you look at that and the fact that we assisted on 21 and 28 field goals, and they were right in the middle of that as well. You know, our front line. So it's not only were they making baskets, you know, they were feeding each other. And I think that's a, an example of, of how far we've come. And then you're, uh, you went on that big run. 17 or 19, whatever it was, but the first, first 13 were scored with Marble and White on the bench, kind of a testimony to your depth maybe this year. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of happened all year long with this team. We had a, a lineup on the floor that was clicking at both ends. I thought Clemens was great tonight. Oh, oh. Ola Shaney really affected the game. He had a couple inside, nice inside passes during that run and had three dunks, blocks. And, and blocks. You know, I mean, his energy level, and it, you know what he's doing now is he's figuring out exactly where he has to be. You know, he's he used to work hard and move his feet, but he would be a, he would be a little late. He wouldn't read situations. He's reading situations now, and he's just playing. He's playing relaxed, playing with confidence. And uh, you know, you have a guy that big, that athletic, who can pass and catch, and dunk, and block shots, and run, and guard the post, and play with energy. You know, the impact it has on our team because uh, Woodbury and Masabi were spectacular today, but they were getting tired. They were working. So then we come in with, with, with Zach and Gabe, and we don't lose anything. It's, it's a great, great situation to be in. Your two freshmen had their Big Ten highs in the last game of the year. How do you account for that? Uh, well, I, I think it's, it's nothing more, Mike, than, than, than they've continued to improve. They've continued to work. You know, they both have had great moments. They both have had some days where they struggled a little bit, but they persevered and they stayed positive. We stayed positive with them, and uh, they were they were outstanding today. Does this mean anything personally for you? Three hundred wins. I mean, that's a no. <laughs> Not at all. You know, I, I will say this. Uh, I've been fortunate. I've had I've been in some great places, and I. I, I you know, been fortunate enough to work for really good people, and most importantly, have really terrific players. You know, that, that played for me, and a lot of a lot of different stops. You know, and you know, I think that's what you think about. Realistically, what are you capable of in Chicago? One in the Big Ten tournament. What will that take? Well, it's going to take a lot of what you saw today in terms of our depth producing at the level that they did because we'd have to win four games consecutively and that's going to take a lot of energy. We hope to get Mike back. That, that would help and I think that will happen. So that will give us another handler, another shooter, another playmaker. Uh, but anytime you know you win a tournament championship and I, I've been fortunate enough to have some teams that have done that, you know it's it never seems to go exactly as everybody thinks it's going to go. You, know, you got to get some guys step up. There might be one guy who has one great game, uh, and you know, six other people are, are really consistent. And you know, we don't turn it over. We rebound the ball. We make some threes. You know, all of those things together, and we have a team that's capable of doing that. Coach nine and nine of the Big Ten. Where do you think you are as far as your NCAA tournament resume entering Chicago? Uh, I, I think we deserve uh, tremendous consideration. Definitely feel like we're one of the best 68 teams. Uh, I think to have gone through this league, clearly the best league in the country, and finished nine and nine. I think you look at you know how we played in our losses. You know, you you get double overtime loss and overtime loss. You know, we played Michigan State without our leading scorer. Won three out of four without our third leading scorer and our starting point guard. So we, we've we've accomplished a great deal. Brian, when um, 
when you guys lost to Nebraska a couple weeks ago, a lot of people had you dead and buried, yet you're not. What, what happened? What is it about this group that's allowed them to persevere? Well, I think it starts with, you know, we have great leadership with Eric May. Uh, we have tremendous character on our team. You know, I've said that from the beginning with, with Marvel in particular. Because, I mean, how many people could go through the kind of slump he did for that period of time and just come out and play the way he's playing? Uh, but it's a team that they, they truly like each other. They, they work hard together. You know, I, I can tell you, you know, in, in July, you know, I'm on the road recruiting, and they're in the gym all the time. Uh, nobody, we can't require them to be there. I didn't ask them to go. They were just in there. So it's, it's that kind of mentality that I think sort of permeates this program. And they kind of push one another. They support one another. And there's really legitimately no selfishness. So, you know, if a guy starts, it's great. If he doesn't, um, do what I can off the bench. You know, there has been no, no bickering, no dissension in any way, shape, or form. Guys just play the role I ask them to play. And I think a great example of that is, you know, Mel Salvasabi. Thursday night you're going to be playing Northwestern your third time. Just were your initial thoughts on that particular matchup for up against them? Anytime you play Northwestern, I mean, I, I, I've known Bill Carmody for a long time. He's a tremendous coach, you know, difficult style. He needs some time to get ready. We have some time, fortunately. And we've guarded it this year better than we ever have offensively. We attacked the 1-3-1 better than we ever have. Last year, not so good. You know, so uh, you know, we'll have to be ready for, for those two things. What's it, what does it say about Clemens that he you know, has had a quite a few weeks and then today he kind of spikes? I, I think Clemens is a very confident person, just you know, his nature. He doesn't seem to, to rattle much, <laughs> as you've noticed throughout the course of the season. He's not afraid to shoot the ball at crunch time. He's not afraid to shoot it late. He made really big and one in the game when they made the run back at us. Uh, but you know his his point guard ability, his playmaking was really critical in the stretch. You know, especially without Mike. You were able to get Rickard in there at the end. How nice was having the game in hand so you could do that for him. Yeah, you know, you know we'll always wish you could get him in for a little bit more. You know, he's such a tremendous, tremendous person. He's exactly what you wanted to walk on. He's a great student. Phenomenal worker, really bright. You know, he, he, he knows everybody's offense in this league, runs it. And uh, just happy he was able to at least get him in. From uh, start to finish, how much has Woodbury improved? Well, the thing about Adam is he just keeps working. You know, he's improved a lot. I think you've seen him. You know, he's not turning it over. He's not taking bad shots. You know he's going to rebound and defend. You know he's going to run. He's going to play with great energy. And then he gets a couple shots to go in, and he's just that much more comfortable out there. Coach Eric May's final game here at Carver. Can you talk about the mark he's left on this program? You know, with, with, with Eric, uh, needless to say, he's had an interesting career. And uh, from the minute that I got here, he was all in. And as everyone knows that follows this program, that wasn't the case. <coughs> You know, you need to be able to know as, as you prepare your team to move forward, you know, who's with you and who can you count on. And from the beginning, I could count on him. Uh, I found it interesting that, you know, you know, I was happy that our recruiting class got a lot of attention. But I thought what ended up happening was, you know, we focused on our junior class, which is really good, our sophomore class, which is good, and then our freshman class, which is also good. And it's like, well, you know, those guys are going to do it. And Eric's kind of on his way out. He was hurt last year. What can you really expect from him? Well, I mean, he's averaged good numbers and, and produced at a high level in this league his freshman and sophomore year. His junior year, he did at times. He was just hurt. So, you know, I, I essentially put the team in his hands as our captain, as our leader. And, uh, you know, our, our players respond to him. You know, he's not a guy who talks a lot, but when he talks, everybody listens to him. They follow his lead. They follow his example. And, uh, you know, to, to see, you know, the crowd respond to him the way they did is, is a tremendous feeling for me.